Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In the mounting procedure that you are, have accomplished or are in the process of uh, doing, you may have had some experience with the incisal guide table or the incisal guide relationships on the articulator in relation to the stone cast. Um, as you may have found out by now, some relationships of the stone casts are accepted by the articulator. Um, in other cases, the relationships of the stone cast in the lateral excursions or in the protrusive excursions, the incisal guide table will not accept or will not protect the stone cast adequately. Remember, uh, the purpose of the incisal guide table is to simulate or duplicate some of the guidances provided by the teeth in the protrusive or the lateral excursions uh, without causing wear on the teeth and thus decreasing the vertical dimension. First, we would have the case which the incisal guide table could accept, where the incisal guide table could accept the relationship uh, in the protrusive excursion. About 99% of the time in the lateral excursions, we can duplicate uh, with raising the lateral wings of the incisal guide table, we can duplicate or simulate the lateral excursions. However, in the protrusive excursion, it is sometimes difficult. We may have a case such as this where the incisal relationship or the relation of the incisal edge of the lower incisors to the lingual surface of the maxillary teeth uh, is a shallow is a shallow angle. This can be accepted probably very nicely by the articulator. You see here, this it simulates the incisal pin of the articulator contacting the incisal table. The angle that the lower incisal edge would traverse across the lingual surface of the maxillary central incisor, this should be simulated in the uh, incisal table so that when we move the articulator in the protrusive excursion, that is moving the upper member of the articulator backward, as it rides up this surface, it would duplicate or be the same as this angle uh, here in the mouth. This shallow angle, um, the, this set of casts, can be, uh, the, the shallow incisal angle can be duplicated by the incisal table. If we go into the protrusive excursion, here, and we bring the incisal edges in the end-to-end -end relationship, the table can be raised enough to clear these stone teeth and prevent the wear. And also, the lateral wings of this uh, incisal table can be raised enough to duplicate the the lateral incisal angle. See here we can move the articulator without abrading the stone surfaces of the teeth. Now we go to another situation in which the incisal angle is very steep and it cannot be duplicated by the articulator, by the components of the uh, incisal uh, table. You see a very steep overbite and you can see on the, the that this cannot be accepted by the incisal uh, pin and the table cannot be tilted enough to duplicate this steep angle. So it is going to be the purpose of this uh, procedure to construct a little mount or a little uh, acrylic incisal uh, guide to simulate this angle. This line here will be parallel to the line 
that would be the lingual surface of the maxillary teeth. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in almost 99% of the cases, we can raise the lateral wings of the incisal guide table to simulate the lateral excursion. If I move the articulator here, move the upper member to the right, and this it does not necessarily mean that the anterior teeth have to provide the guidance. It can be coming from the posterior teeth, but the guidance is necessarily coming from the stone cast. I can raise this incisal table to touch the incisal pin when the casts are in their end-to-end -end relationship. And thus, make the articulator accept this lateral guidance. Just a little bit short yet. I raise it just a little more, and I can move the articulator so that the stone casts are not abrading and that the pin is taking the brunt or is uh, producing the guidance. Now I should do this bilaterally first. I will now move the articulator to the left and raise the lateral wing with the screw on the side until it touches the table. And this is providing the guidance now in this lateral excursion. However, if I attempt to set the protrusive inclination by raising, by simulating a protrusive excursion of the cast, bringing them into a near end to end relationship, this incisal table does not raise far enough to allow the pin to come into contact with the table. So at this stage, the teeth. On this, or the stone casts are abrading. And to prevent this abrasion, we're going to fabricate the, the customized incisal guide. First thing we do is go, we're going to loosen the mount or the uh, screw, thumb screw on the bottom of the articulator and set the incisal table at zero or let it be horizontal. I'm going to now tighten this so that it doesn't move. The next thing I do is to uh, measure out my autopolymerizing acrylic or quick cure acrylic. Now here we have a, a fast tray or a fast setting acrylic. This is the powder and this is the liquid which is uh, which comes with a measuring device which you should use uh, in order to get the proper consistency. Now I'm going to Vaseline my fingertips with just a little bit so that when I'm handling the acrylic in its doughy stage it's not going to stick to my fingers. I'll then mix the acrylic and wait until it reaches its doughy type consistency or a handling consistency. This may be just a bit dry under these hot lights. I'm going to add just a touch more liquid, just a couple of drops. Okay, now we don't need much acrylic. If you take one measuring uh, cup full and one liquid, uh, it should be enough for two or three of you to do at the same time. Now what I'm going to do is to mold it in my fingers. You can see it, it becomes 
very pliable and non-sticky. Now we're going to put it into the back part of the articulator. Put just a small portion and lock it under the, the inclined wings of the incisal guide table. Now we should be sure that the casts are in centric occlusion originally, so we're going to raise the incisal pin and then drop it to make sure the acrylic does not interfere with the centric occlusion. Now while it is in its, uh, while it's solidifying or while it's becoming hard and it's still molten, we're going to simulate the protrusive excursion. with the stone cast, putting them in their end-to-end -end relationship and we're actually molding the plastic with the incisal pin. Now we're going to also make the lateral excursions to make sure we cut off any acrylic that is that is in front of our guidance. But we're actually molding this acrylic with the incisal pin. It's now becoming set. But you can see I can make this protrusive excursion. And if we look at the incisal edges of the teeth, I'm duplicating this concavity. The incisal pin riding over the acrylic is duplicating the movement of the cast of the incisal edges of the mandibular teeth over the lingual concavity of the maxillary teeth. Now, if we look down at the incisal table again, we're going to try to create a little plateau where it has gone uh, beyond the end-to-end -end relationship. In other words, beyond this little plateau here, the teeth are, are, no, longer, uh, are no longer in an end-to-end -end relationship and the maxillary teeth are actually going be behind the mandibular teeth. So, we're not protecting the incisal edges at this relationship. So this we can cut back or we will reduce, we will reduce the level of this, of this acrylic to this little plateau area. We will have to do this with a dental burr or a, uh, or a dent or an acrylic stone. Now after it is set, we can lower the incisal, lateral incisal guides and break loose our mouth or our little uh, customized uh, guide. We can then take it in, in our hands, trim it back so that we have this little plateau uh, beyond the end-to-end -end relationship. And after you trim it, it should look something like this. You see we ride up the, the incisal pin rides up in the protrusive fashion and then beyond the end-to-end -end relationship it is uh, sort of flattened out. So it is not incredibly steep. This can be repositioned into the articulator and positioned with sticky wax probably would be the best thing or a, a compound of some sort to hold it in position. I'm now raising the lateral wings to hold our finished product and at that stage I'm also going to use this little thumb set screw to lock that lateral wing in position and also it's the same thing for the other side. Now we have our, our customized uh, acrylic guide for both the lateral excursions and the protrusive excursion. Like I said, uh, we almost always find that it will be, it will be accepted, uh, the lateral wings will accept the lateral guidances provided by the teeth. And they, it isn't necessarily just the anterior teeth which will do the guiding. It may be the molars or bicuspid areas also. Uh, but this will help us uh, duplicate their, this guidance. Now the laterals we can almost always set and uh, the stone cast usually are, the guidance is not that steep that it goes beyond the capabilities of the articulator. But the protrusive 
oftentimes because of this steep relationship in the anterior or a locked type of occlusion will not allow the protrusive movement to be simulated by the table. With our customized acrylic addition to the incisal table, we, we are now able to simulate this protrusive uh, or in, in the incisal angle in the uh, mechanical table. So on the cast, the stone cast will now not abrade. They will now, now they will not lose the vertical dimension. And we can uh, go through any dental procedure moving the casts over each other without worrying about uh, loss of vertical dimension due to abrasion. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.